Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Now we, we can, yeah, we can see you and hear you. Oh. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hi. Spoke too soon, Lolita. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, Reverend Pettiford, we cannot see you and we cannot hear you. Uh, can you hear me now? We can hear you now. Okay. Can't Ooh. see you though. Uh, uh, are you praising? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, just stating the fact. <laughs> uh, let me let me keep something that will take me back to that place. Um, okay. Uh, oops, that's that's the wrong one. We can see you. I I mean, it's okay. Not as, okay, that's perfect right there. Oh, okay. Okay. So, oh. and just a reminder that Margaret Graham is going to be late. So she sent in a recording of her song. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, I, let, let's, let's have that now. Thank you. Amen. Is Sister Himes with us today? Okay. Well, may we bow. Lord, we do thank you for this opportunity. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for allowing us in the Noonday Bible study to adopt the in spite of and anyhow mentality. Now, O oh Lord, that we are here today, we pray your spirit meet us here. Lord, lead us into truth, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We are continuing in the 25th chapter of Matthew. We're continuing in this section of Matthew, which has to, where Jesus is addressing of eschatological themes. Uh, there are several uh, 
parables that he uses uh, and narratives, and one of which I think we'll get to today is quite instructive for us in our continuing work as a congregation and as persons, but all of them uh, teach us something. Um, I, if I remember correctly, uh, our study last week ended with verse 18, and we pick up today with 19. But let's first address our questions to kind of get our minds going. Uh, these are familiar passages of scripture, but let us take a look at these questions. Uh, and the verses that they refer to. The first question uh, concern is found in verse 21 and in verse 23. What words does the master use to describe the servant in verse 21, in verse 23? That's the first question. Second question comes from verse 32. Who will separate the people? And the third question comes from verse 31. Who is to come in his glory and sit on his royal throne with all nations gathered before him? And that's verse 31. Let's take a quick uh, couple of minutes on these questions and then we'll share and begin our reading and discussion. Okay, let's begin sharing our work. I, I imagine everybody is about finished now. Uh, who will volunteer to go first and share your work on number one? I will. All righty. 
Number one, what does the master use to describe the servant in verse 21 and verse 23? Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Yes, yes, thy good and faithful servant. He, he describes both of these servants in the same way. All right. What translation do you have, if I may ask? Your translation uses the word servant as well. Um, the revised. Okay. Revised standard? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, I forget which one it is, but there is a translation that uses the word slave. Uh, oh. um, which is an interesting translation. Uh, especially for African-Americans. <clears throat> question number two. Who will share question number two? Who will separate the people? Okay. All the nations will be gathered before him, him being the son of man, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Okay. All right. And your answer? The son of man or Jesus? Ah, okay. All right. I didn't have to push you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Son of Man or Jesus. All right. Uh, um, a by the way comment. This is a very appropriate Advent Christmas Bible study. This is a very appropriate Advent Christmas Bible study, and this is a specific Advent Christmas question uh, from verse from chapter 25. Who will separate the people? And question number three, somebody. Who is to come in his glory and sit on his royal throne with all nations gathered before him? And the answer is the son of man or Jesus. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn king. Amen. All right. Let's, let's begin our reading. Um, according to my remembrance, uh, we begin reading at verse 19. Would someone volunteer to begin at 19 and read down to 30, from 19 to 30? I will. Thank you. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you had you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathered where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered, said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to other servant. Sorry about that. For to everyone who has more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, 
even what he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Reverend Pitt Floyd. Yes, sir. Uh, the New American Standard Bible says mm -hmm. uh, slave. Says what? Use the word slave rather than a servant. Okay, New American Standard uses the word slave. Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, speaking of words, of vocabulary, uh, I want to spend a, a little bit of time talking about some of the, the language uh, in this passage. Um, uh, Sister Bush, you, you read, what translation did you read from? New King James Version. New King James. And yeah. New King James in verse 20 says the man who had received five talents, right? Yes. Five talents. Right. Okay. Would you go back and read verse 19 again? After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Okay. 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 New King James says, settle accounts. Yes. And would you go back and read verse 14 again? Okay. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And the okay. one he gave, oh, okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just I just wanted 14 for right now. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks. Now, the New King James is, the New King James and the King James and a couple of other of our translations uh, are very uh, uh, smooth with this parable and using the word talents, but they get rather specific and um, rather specific in verse 14. All translations are quite specific in verse 14 that this is Jesus using a parable that includes the use of money to teach something about the kingdom of heaven. The word talents here is not the same as the meaning of talents in our modern day language. Talents is an amount of money. Even in the King James and the New King James, he delivered, the master delivers his goods or some translations say his wealth. And some are quite specific and say his money. But this is talking about money. Because what does the third servant do with the talent? He goes and hides it in the ground. You can dig a hole and put money in it. <laughs> but you do not dig a hole and put the modern definition the modern American definition of talent in a hole in the ground. Okay, so this is about money. <clears throat> now, Jesus is not calling the gospel money. He's using a parable to teach something about the kingdom of heaven. As he says, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a master who shares uh, bags of money. I forget which translation it is. I think it's uh, new, new Living. The NIV uses bags of gold. Yeah, bags of, bags of gold. I think the New Living uses coins. And the message uh, uses the words investment or dollars. The message now that 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 that's quite contemporary for us. 
to one he gave five thousand, another five thousand dollars, two thousand, and one thousand, depending on their abilities. As as we read together uh, last week, each of the three does something different with the money. However, he delivered unto each servant an amount of money for them, expecting them, expecting them to increase the money. Even the third servant, and quite often when we discuss this passage, at least my experiences being in groups that discuss this passage and, and even hearing sermons on this passage, uh, the attention, if not the emphasis intended, but the attention seems to settle on the third servant who hid the money in the ground. Hope, let, let's, but let's, let's also emphasize in our minds today the first two servants. Both of them doubled the investment. This master invests with his servants money. And the two faithful servants double the money while the master is away. He comes and he, he comes and has an accounting and they deliver double the amount of money entrusted with them. And he says to both of them the same thing, right? Everybody see that? Yes. He, says, he says unto them, to both of them the same thing. You have been faithful. Some translations say you have been, most translations say you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. <laughs> now, if the kingdom of heaven is like that, if we are faithful with what God entrusts with us, Jesus is saying, we will be told, you good and faithful servant, you have been faithful with a few things. I will entrust you with more things. Notice something here. In this parable, I'm not now I'm not trying to put words in the mouth of Jesus. But in this parable, though, there is no mention of on the other side. There is no mention of after death. But simply saying. But the master says to the servants, because you have been faithful with this amount, I will put you in charge of more. This is really a principle of life. I, I, I think in, in some way you can, uh, you can look in your life and see how there can be increase in responsibility as one handles responsibility, if handles it well. And for those who do not handle it well, it's not an increase in responsibility. Now, I don't, I think we make a mistake if we push any parable too far. That's one of the things uh, we were instructed by our pastor at, at back when I, at my home church in Bible study. Even the parables of Jesus will break, fall apart if you push it too far. But if you let it say what it's saying, it brings out an aspect of the truth. No one parable covers the whole gospel or all aspects of the gospel or all repercussions of the gospel or all consequences of any action uh, that we might have. <clears throat> money has been so misused uh, by so many people, so many organizations, so many nations, dot, 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 et cetera, et cetera, that for many of us, we, 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 we might be tempted 
to think negatively when anybody begins to talk about money. But Jesus often uses money to make an illustration about the kingdom of heaven and about life. And, and so does the Old Testament. Uh, so does the Old Testament. And um, but there are aspects of the kingdom of heaven pitiful, I do believe that we can experience on this side of the river Jordan which just magnifies for us what's on the other side what's on the other side Does that make does that make sense? Everybody? Anybody? Yes. Okay. Um now there is a question that comes up that um with the third servant. And I have heard it answered both ways. I do not have a definitive answer but I lean toward one of the answers. It has been, and the question is this, is does the third servant illustrate loss of salvation? Some suggest it does, and some say the third servant illustrates chastisement. Um, I do not have a definitive answer to that. Uh, I lean toward chastisement. I lean toward chastisement. Uh, does anyone want to share your your position on that? I, I I'm not trying to 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 uh, ram anything down our throats or our heads. Reverend Pettiford. How yes. do you interpret 29 and 30? Is that similar to what you're saying or? That's, 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 that is what I'm referring to 29 okay. and 30. Okay. I refer, I, 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 I see this as Jesus talking about the chastisement mm -hmm. of folk who do not handle their responsibilities. Well, uh, at the risk of pushing it too far. And I, Trust I'm not pushing it too far. Everything in our possession is given to us temporarily. When you go make out your will, everything you have can be represented in a will because you're not going to take it with you. <laughs> Don't care whether you paid for it, whether somebody gave it to you, whether you borrowed it or, or whatever. <laughs> it's only in our hands for a while. Um, but there, even though it belongs to somebody else, what we do with it has consequences in our lives. <laughs> you know, if you have a mortgage <laughs> and you don't handle responsibility of that mortgage, well, anybody working in a bank can tell you right quick what happens. And what's that? Foreclosures. Huh? Foreclosures. Foreclosure. That's right. Foreclosure. That's right. Foreclosure. And who gets closed out? You get closed out. You get foreclosed. And is is that not weeping and gnashing of teeth? Mm -hmm. Do not your heart strings get pulled when you see someone who appears to be homeless? Yes. Uh, but that but that's I'd like to think that our I do think. Well, I'll, I'll leave it. I'll, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. 
I'm asking, is there anyone else who, who'd like to take a minute to share a differing view of the third circle? Please, please feel free to do so. Um, the commentary in my Bible, I'd like to read that if I could. Go right ahead. Okay. It says, at this judgment, all nations, and then in parentheses, better all Gentiles stand before Christ, who then separates the sheep, parentheses, the saved from the goats, parentheses, the, the lost, in a manner reminiscent of the shepherd, or in a manner reminiscent of the wheat and the tares parable. Note that these are living nations. Whereas the great white throne judgment is one of the wicked dead whose bodies are resurrected to face the final judgment of the lost. Thus, the saved are invited to come into the and share the blessings of the kingdom. Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom. The basis of their separate of their acceptance seems to seems to be their treatment of the least of these, my brethren, the okay. saved and the great tribulation. Okay. Okay. Deacon Davis. Uh huh. We're coming to that. We're coming to that power. We're coming to that lesson. We haven't gotten to that lesson yet. Okay. Yeah, that begins with thirty-one. That begins at 31. Yes? Madam Pettiford, I have a, a different take on this um, mm -hmm. in trying to apply it to our lives today. My yes. thing is, what are we doing while we're waiting for him to come back with what he's given us? So yeah. if I look at the fact that there were some that, like we say, doubled their increase, and mm -hmm. this one person who didn't do anything but put it in a hole, I would hope that for those who don't really do anything, they would mm -hmm. not lose their salvation while they're waiting for him to come. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, could I, could I, uh, Go ahead. Read the expression in mind. Go ahead. It said, the last man was thinking only of himself. He hoped to play it safe and protect himself from his hard taskmaster. But he was judged for the self centeredness We must not make excuses to avoid doing what God calls us to do. If God yeah. tru truly is our master, we must obey willingly. Our time, abilities, and money aren't ours in the first place. That's we right. are care givers, not owners. Right. When we ignore partner uh, abuse what we are given we are rebellious and deserve to be punished yeah uh thank you yeah thank you Ben Pettiford, i have a question mm -hmm. oh go ahead go ahead yeah um though we have we have shared openly and freely I hope of uh, varying takes on the third servant there is there is a area of agreement the third servant is not to be uh is not held up to 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 do like the third servant but we are the the best the thing to do is to do like the first two servants <laughs> Uh, the third servant is told that 
according to the NIV, you're wicked and you're lazy. You knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. This is 26, 27 says, well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Because remember the master gave this servant according to this servant's ability. And this servant is receives consequences Whichever those, whatever those consequences are in literal terms, but receives consequences for not living up to his own ability. Mm -hmm. Not living up to the other's abilities. They were traders, traders, T-R-A-D-E-R-S. The, the least you could have done <laughs> is to have lent it and receive the income from lending. And, you know, when you lend money, you don't receive the same rate as successful and skillful traders might receive. Uh, so it's not the amount of money that he returned back to the owner. It's not even doing what he was able to do. God, in other words, God is fair. <laughs> He's not expecting what we can't do. He's expecting what we can do. Okay, uh, Wyrene, I, I didn't forget you. I just <laughs> talked to you. <laughs> no, actually, you, you did answer my query because this servant, we would, uh, bankers would categorize him as risk averse. And the, the least he could have done was mm -hmm. to deposit it in a bank because even today you're going to get the least amount for your money from a bank. Yeah. But my question is, even had he done that, um, for those who there's not a whole lot expected from them, but if they do the little bit that they do, they won't lose. They'll still get some kind of reward. But he yeah. lost everything because he didn't even do what he could have done. Okay. Okay. That's right. Is that a hand up I see? Yes. But on okay. the other hand, I think sometimes being human, you don't trust yourself. And he he said he was fearful. And when fear in, enters into your mind or your being, you don't always trust what you mm -hmm. normally would do. So I kind of feel for the third one, but see him as a, a human being. Like everybody doesn't always do the right thing. Paul even says, the thing I will not do, I do. So yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. I feel for him. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, something I said before, uh, each, each parable of Jesus does not, does not teach the same aspect of the truth. This is a different parable from the one that's coming up. Now, the one that's coming up is, is different. It's different. Uh, just, just in the interest of time, there is something I, I, I do want to point out that's interesting about Jesus in chapter 25, and chapter 24, and, and this section of Matthew that begins uh, in Holy Week after his coming into Jerusalem. There's an intensity of teaching here. Notice, and we can see it in chapter 25. You don't even have to review uh, 24 and 23. Notice here the things that Jesus emphasizes as being most important to God, most important to the kingdom of heaven really, and thereby most important for us, they may be some of the things that have not been always most emphasized by the church 
organized. It is important in the relationship with what's important in our relationship to God. Sometimes is not the same thing that's most emphasized in the institutional church. What's emphasized here has to do with spiritual qualities. Now, we really see this in the next section of scripture. The, the, uh, Andre, you, you can probably, uh, read this from, from, you can probably recite the next section. <laughs> yes. It, it's one that's most familiar to us at, at First Baptist because we use it so often. Yes. Uh, uh, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will, starting at 31, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Notice the language in 34, our question uh, asked about the language in 31. The 30, 34, now this is the NIV, 34 says, then the king, who is the king? The son of man, or Jesus. Jesus. The king will say to those on his right, come, you blessed, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you, you gave, gave me something you to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Now, let's pause right there. Each of those things listed I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was a stranger, I needed clothes, I was sick, I was in prison. Who is the king identifying with? He's the least of these. Yeah, the least, of, that's right. The least of these. Least of these. But it's the least of these in whose eyes? Man. Man's eyes. Man's eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who, is, who are they in God's eyes? <laughs> they are him. They're great. They're, they're <laughs> blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hungry, the sick, mm -hmm. those in prison. Yes. The thirsty. Mm -hmm. Now, now, now this is Pettiford talking now. He doesn't say, he does not say you conk, you solve the problem. You solve the problem of world hunger. Mm -hmm. He didn't say you solve the problem of clean water for the world. He said, you gave me something to drink. You gave me something to eat. You gave me something I could wear. I was sick and you looked after me. He didn't say you healed me. Again, something anybody can do. What's that word uh, we, 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 we often use and when we hear it, we know it's a mispronunciation, but we know exactly what it means. Everybody can do something. <laughs> Everybody can do something. And he's saying to those who did something, you did it unto me. <laughs> that just floors me. <laughs> In, as yeah. In as much. That's, yeah, that's the King James word. In, In as much. And we loved it. I, I loved it. I love that. In as much, Andre. I love In as much. Um, and the folk who did it didn't even know they was doing it. <laughs> when did we? 
see you. <laughs> and he comes back again, and the parable comes back again. The, the, the lesson comes back again in verse 40. And reading again from the NIV, the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. <sighs> That's good news. That's good news. That's good news. One of the saddest things for me is to hear someone talking and trying to evaluate their life. And they seem to put so much emphasis on things that according to the our reading of the gospel, Jesus never mentions as being important. There, there are a few things that I feel real good about in my own life. Uh, but when I read the gospel, I don't see any anything about Jesus that says it's important to him. It's important to me, but doesn't seem to be so important to him. Uh, but the things that are important to him are the really important things. Uh, Any 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 comments? Any questions uh, about our discussion of this last parable here? Before we, we we turn the corner and 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 come down the home stretch with it. Okay. This, this parable, this teaching that begins in 30, 31, not to the end of the chapter, it is not all is, is, is foundational for us in our in our in as much efforts, whether it's the the formal in as much or the the ordinary day-to-day, -day, week to week, or, or sporadically things that we do individually. Uh, the little things not that are not so little but but it also has to do with uh, as Deacon Davis read to us from from his commentary has to do with eternal and everlasting consequences the king the son of man comes in his glory sit on his and sits and will sit on his glorious throne. Before him is who? All nations gather and he separates. He does not separate according to the nations. He does not separate according to Gent Jew and Gentile. He does not separate according to American and Hispanic or Asian or, or, or tribe but separates accord, according to what? According to this criteria, which is really not even, if you take it, if you take it word for word, there is no quote unquote religious act mentioned here, except the act of giving somebody hungry something to eat, giving somebody thirsty something to drink, giving someone who needs clothes something to wear, visiting someone who's in prison, seeing about someone who's sick. Um, it, this is, this, to me, this makes the gospel so beautiful. Um, of course, the negative corollary, the negative corollary is just as important a truth. Many will say, Lord, when did we see you 
and, and I'll just substitute a word. When did we see you in need and not meet the need? In as much as you saw the least of these, to use that word that represents what society thinks or what man thinks, the least of these, you did not do it to me. Um, That's that's mighty. Did, now, the things that the, the organized church does is important, especially when, as a result of our activity with the organized church, we do what's important to the king. <laughs> now, go and eat what's important to the king. What's important to the king? 31 through the end of the chapter doing for the seeing the least of these need and doing something that we can do what's important to the king to the master that which we have being responsible with it according to his desires and our ability not compare we don't have to compare I don't have to compare myself with 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 the great preachers and i and even though sometimes i do feel bad because i haven't done what they have done i can i can check myself ain't what he asked me to do <laughs> he, he asked hmm. me to take what he gave to me and do do something with that well not uh so I want to do something with that. Not something with what he gave somebody else, but with what he gave me. Uh, and, and I'll throw this in. I'll throw this in, y'all, just in transparency. I think that's why uh, my adult years from age 24 have been marked for the most part by peacefulness of mind for the most part there have been some interruptions but for the most part have been dominated by a peaceful mind uh, for the i used to say to people in when i was in lexington uh, before i learned to say it is well i used to say to people you're looking at the happiest man you'll ever see uh, and then I realized that sounds kind of arrogant. So I I, I, I modified it. Uh, but in, in my arrogant days, I think I think of myself as a happy man. Because I found out happiness is not what the world told me it is. They just trying to sell something. Any any comments or uh, or, or questions concerning uh, what we've talked about today? Uh, I certainly don't pretend to have exhausted the, all the truth that is in chapter twenty five or in Matthew. I think what has been helpful for me, Reverend, is what you said about um, in in the verses where uh, when you were thirsty, I gave you some water. When you were sick, I visited you. That, but that doesn't mean I healed you, or I yes, didn't I didn't clean up all the water in the world. So, mm -hmm. you know, it helps me to have a perspective on just do the little bit that you've been assigned to do. Mm -hmm. Because you're not going to cure cancer. You're not going to discover the answer to Alzheimer's. You know, all the things that trouble mm -hmm. us, we're not going to fix those. But do mm -hmm. the little bit that you can do. So that's been helpful yeah. for me. Amen. 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 Also, what you said about yourself reminded me again of the third servant. You said, you, you know, about comparing yourself to others and you realize mm -hmm. That's not that wasn't in your lane, and I just think that's what it was with, with him. He mm -hmm. didn't realize 
Uh, and we hope that he could have later on, mm -hmm. just like the thief on the cross. He mm -hmm. could later realize mm -hmm. this is what I need to do. So that's what I was saying. So yeah. I appreciated that. And then when yeah. we're talking about doing things, it doesn't have to be in the church. I mean, we get uh, asked to make contributions for the firefighters, for the children at St. Jude and other places, and we can't always go there. But mm -hmm. what we can, and maybe we can't do the monthly thing, but we can't do something often. And then the people we see on the yeah. street or encounter mm -hmm. different places and all mm -hmm. like praying. Somebody asks you to pray for it. I remember when we first started in the uh, uh, children in the closets, we would mm -hmm. have somebody say, we want somebody to pray. And I said, hold on a minute. And I'd go get Jesse because he was a mm -hmm. deacon there. Mm -hmm. And it finally dawned on me, that's not who he asked for. He asked <laughs> me. I mean, he asked, would you pray for me? So now either yeah. I'm at the mm -hmm. grocery store or someplace mm -hmm. else, mm -hmm. somebody asked me on the phone, I stopped and pray then. I realize yeah. you asked me, I'm supposed to be able to do this and at least do what I can. I may not yeah. pray like some people, but you know, that's what we, the least of this is what we can do. That's right. Uh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right. Bef before our closing prayer, I want to say, uh, in case I don't see somebody Sunday, have a Merry Christmas. If you're traveling, I pray you safe travel. We pray safe travel for you. Uh, will one of the deacons close us out? Go ahead, Brother Davis. Okay. Let us pray. Father God, once again, we come with bowed heads and humbled hearts. Thanking you for the beauty, the truth, and the just total awesomeness of you and your word. Mm -hmm. Father God, help us to take in what we learn, what we are taught, what we read, what we understand, that we might incorporate it in our lives, that we might be reminiscent of one of the first two servants, Lord, that when you do come back from your long absence, mm. you will say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. Yes. Come into the joy of the Lord. That is our desire, Father God, and we trust and know that you are God and capable of all things. And if we would just keep our eyes focused on you and your word, your precepts, your examples, and your teachings, we would be more like those first two servants. That is our heart's desire, Lord, and we just ask and thank you for your mercy during this absence, during our time of service in your absence, because we know that you are coming back. And Father God, oh, how we want to be ready when you do return. Father God, we thank you for this noonday Bible study and the blessing that it is to all those who partake in it. We pray, Heavenly Father, that during this season, we not lose focus on what it's all about. And it is all about you. Amen. Your son, amen. Jesus, our Christ. And it is in his name we pray this in all prayers and say amen. 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 Merry Christmas. Jesus is the reason for the season. Merry yes, Christmas. Amen. Amen. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas everyone. everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And there's no Christmas without Christ. Amen. Amen.